Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe so we can get you these messages every single week. Have a great day. Welcome to the Family Room! Welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday night on the Family Room. I don't know why I'm talking like a robot. Um, <laughs> He's frozen. <laughs> by the way. I'm buffering. Let us know while you're, where you're watching from while we get into, uh, get into the show tonight. Let us know. Leave a comment, uh, share it. Hopefully we get some more new people tonight. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you guys join us. Uh, go ahead and hit the This entire like program it. is being brought to you by AI. We're not really here. <laughs> this is just our... I'm streaming from my house <laughs> in a t-shirt. What a day. Glad to have you along with us. It's getting a little cold, and it's going to get colder over the next few days, so bundle up. Uh, Jared likes to keep it like 20 degrees in here. What is your blood made out of? Dattle pepper sauce? It's yes, it's uh, hot lava. It's the fire of God that is burning within me. <laughs> that keeps me so warm. I'm, I'm hot right now. I'm constantly me. freezing, so I'm bundled up in a big old jacket. You know, but <laughs> we're glad to do it. You're there, and Debbie Coffin, hello. Hope everybody is warm. Glad to have you guys in the rooms. We've got people in different rooms. A couple of quick things to bring us. Last Sunday, we opened up the church for people who were interested, who were new to us. Uh, that was awesome to see. Yes, we had our, our first time in a long time, new members uh, kind of class course, whatever you want to call it. Um, just went over the uh, beliefs of the church and the vision and, you know, everything like that. Hope, um, just giving some more information on how the church runs, how the church works, the different ministries. Uh, it was great. And all that. Yeah, there was a big turnout. Over 20 people came in for that. And so we <coughs> got everybody the information, gave them the information. Uh, you guys that watch online, if you're at a distance and you'd like to partner with us in ministry, we can send you that electronically, let you know all about our church. Just let us know that you need it. But uh, that's a powerful, exciting thing, starting the new year with new people getting involved, wanting to jump in, getting those people plugged in, getting them connected and all that. Uh, starting... Uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, we started doing the food pantry every Saturday. And what they're telling me uh, is that they have an abundance of volunteers, which is a good thing. Always a good thing. I, I operate under the belief that you cannot have too many volunteers um, for anything in the church. Uh, you just never know who could get sick or what the case may be. Or, you know, it's just. I'm sure when the disciples were feeding uh, 20,000 people, they probably wanted a few more hands. More hands, more help. So I, I, that's just my opinion. I don't think you can ever have too many people. Uh, and if you're not serving in the church, Jesus wants you to serve in the church. <laughs> that's not just because we want you to serve in the church. Uh, it's about bringing the uh, the community together to help spread the gospel. Uh, I was actually wa I was watching a video on the way here. Um, on the armor of God mm -hmm. and that when Paul was talking about the shield of faith, um, when he was writing that, obviously he was thinking about the Roman shields mm -hmm. and the Roman shields, I don't know if you knew this, they had notches in the sides mm -hmm. so that you could join them together with the people beside you mm -hmm. to create a better and impenetrable wall. Hello. So the whole point of the shield of faith is so that we can join with other people in the faith Welcome protected. to the family room. We're already jumping into it. That's a good thing, though. It's exciting. Uh, those of you that work in the pantry, thank God for new volunteers. And when they come, man, welcome them, plug them in. We're going to put a plan in place to get the new new people trained and, and all that goes along with it. The other ministries that uh, we have, Acts 29, the building of the wheelchair ramps. They had their first project last Saturday, built a brand new wheelchair ramp for a, a gentleman in Elkton who could not get out of his house because he didn't have one. 4S is every Wednesday night, our homeless ministry. They're meeting back there tonight, uh, putting hygiene kits together, sorting through clothes and all that kind of stuff. There's just so many dining with dignity, things that you can get involved in. Um, Kelsey has said this a lot. Let this be a year of serving. I Yeah, I agree. Why not? I agree. Plug in, get involved, uh, do something because you, you could make a difference just with your presence. While we're talking about things that are coming up, mark your calendar. This is one that people are anticipating on Monday, January the 22nd at 6.30 in the event room here at the church, the study on the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be interesting. I know um, if you haven't gotten, there's a book involved. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not prepared with whatever the book is called. 
The Holy um, Spirit. It's, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not just the Bible. No, there, um, there's a book uh, on the Holy Spirit. I believe it's posted on our Facebook. I'm sure Kelsey will be putting a link or something <clears throat> in the comments as well. Uh, just to get that. That's not this coming Monday. That is the following Monday on January 22nd at 6.30 p.m. with Paul Pearson uh, doing that one, right? Yes, the Apostle Paul Pearson is going to be... <laughs> It's going to be teaching that <laughs> class. It'll start at 6.30. It'll probably go for about an hour in the event room. Uh, so come and, and enjoy that. Even if you don't have a book, you don't need one, he will give you the information for that. It's going to be talking about the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I think it's a great uh, study to start the year off with. Um, and I think people are really looking forward to it. Let's say some hellos to people that are in the room. Amy and Hernandez. Tom Kelsey. Mitchell. Kelsey's watching. Uh, I don't have YouTube pulled up. Since Frank Chenoweth is watching. Betty Keating. Got Tanya. Flash J. Bang. That's is a weird that? name. I don't know. I'm sorry. I have to go by the usernames. Joe Costello is watching. Um, oh, oh, yes. Kathy he Murray. And Kathy Murray. I mean, she was blowing up. I had the chat. Um, for YouTube when we finally got going on Sunday because mm -hmm. the internet was down. So that was fun. Uh, she was, the YouTube chat was going off. All right, Kathy, we're going to appoint you as the official Sunday morning chat leader. She in, was, it was like, it was cool. You to were see. really breaking it down and making the points. When you hear the points, you were dropping the points behind me. You are appointed as the official pointer <laughs> online uh, chat room person for Sunday mornings. If you can handle that, we would be happy to have you do that for us. Sheila uh, Bateman, we got quite a few jumping glad in. Glad to have you all there. So Sunday, we talked about one of these basic topics, you must be born again. The What a difference a week makes. The week before was, is there any word from the Lord? And so it was one of those high five, chest bumps, run around, shout, uh, meat of the word sermons that confronted a lot of issues that are going on in our world. This Sunday was just that simple, basic gospel message of the words of Jesus, you must be born again. Yeah, uh, and it was, um, I, you haven't seen it yet if you haven't watched The Chosen, but uh, they displayed that, the meeting with Jesus and Nicodemus, pretty cool mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the show. And I know a lot of people hate on it because, you know, it's kind of expounding on the Bible and they, they say that's a heresy. Um, it's leading a lot of people to Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's awesome. But something that was cool was um, in the scripture when he says, you know, you're doing things that only God could do. Mm -hmm. It was cool how they lead up to that line in the show. Um, I don't want to give spoilers, but I'm going to give spoilers. So it's, it's just kind of cool. Some stuff happens in the first episode um, that he sees. Um, and then he sees a change in the person and then he's just kind of, it sets him on this like reawakening. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's crazy. Cause like, it's cool. Cause you see where he is and then kind of where he's headed and his wife, <coughs> excuse me, in the show has kind of let, um, kind of let like his position kind of get to her and she's enjoying, you know, all the benefits mm -hmm. of like the nice expensive things and all that kind of stuff. And she makes a couple comments that are kind of like, whoa, like um, she's talking about they're, they're going to have some guests over or something. And they're like, oh, dining with you is like next to having dinner with God or something like that. And he, he like calls her out on. He's like, no, no, like, don't ever talk like that. But then you kind of see him going towards the path of, um, you know, like, oh, like God must have came to earth. And then he was he's talking about the miracles and he's like this. These are things that only God himself could have done. And then it kind of like a light bulb goes off in his head. And then he ends up having a meeting with you. It's really cool. Nicodemus. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's ever since I was a kid in Sunday school that it sounds like a cliche, but that has always been one of my favorite stories because it represents this gentleman who was caught up in this religious hierarchy, this system. Uh, and the, the Pharisees, they were uh, they were actively against him. I mean, they, they didn't want to be Nicodemus. Much. Nicodemus. Yeah. Yeah. They were actively against Jesus, but Nicodemus came to him at night because he had seen and heard something and he wanted to know more. And it's always been one of those things that what a powerful thing. They flush it out. Um, they flush it out really well in mm -hmm. the show. If, if you guys haven't seen The Chosen, um, I love it. Kelsey, we've, we started watching it um, together. It's it's phenomenal. And it's it's not, you know, I know it's not exactly the Bible, but it is nice to 
see, you know, just kind of see the story fleshed out. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And it's it's as close to biblically accurate, you know, as they can get. Obviously, there is like some kind of filler stuff and, you know, like different little story thing here and there. But um, it's it's really faithful to the text, I think. And it's it is just cool to kind of put words to a visual, sure. mm -hmm. a visual picture kind of thing. Absolutely. The focus that we gave that day, if you're looking in your Bible, is John chapter three, verses one through eight. Uh, the words of Jesus, you must be born again. Um, we have a saying around here, and we want all of our, our people to understand it, how important it is. The main business is to keep the main business the main business. The church world has a tendency to get off track, to get to chasing other things and to focusing on other things. We want to remember that our primary purpose is to evangelize, to, how do you say it, reach people that are far from God. Reach, oh, to uh, the mission statement, um... Family church exists so that those far from God will come back to the arms of the Father. Just just that, just Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel, make disciples. Uh, that is the main business. Um, and it is, it is kind of a shame. You know, I get some of the gimmicks to try to get people into the building, but obviously like that, they're kind of, there can be at times too big of a focus on getting people in the building Mm -hmm. uh, with gimmicks and everything. And then you kind of lose sight of, you know, yeah. what the gospel is and just making sure that you're preaching the gospel to people. And then there's the other side of it where you get the other side where, um, everything just ends up staying within the building and nobody's yeah. going mm -hmm. out and doing anything. Nobody's inviting their friends. Nobody's inviting their family. Um, nobody's telling their coworkers at work or, you know, nobody's, giving a homeless person a sandwich or anything mm -hmm. like that. They're not really emulating uh, the love of Jesus. They're not, uh, they're not evangelizing. They're not preaching the gospel and not even just preaching, preaching, but not just, just not spreading the word. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're just keeping everything within the building because it feels good to be in the building and it's all exciting on church. And then next thing you know, you're doing nothing yeah. throughout the week and you're starving your soul. Funny you should say that because I, this is, kind of a backstage moment for you guys in the <coughs> family room. Um, so check this out. Uh, this is my heart. Um, the week before, it was a really moving, powerful service. I mean, it's the, like I said, Sunday, it's those times that you dream about when you're preaching the gospel, the hard things of the scripture and people in the building are yes and shouting and everything. All that week I was preparing towards this particular sermon and to show you how the entertainment culture has in has really affected us and it touched me because I kept saying to myself, well, this is not a big sermon. There, there is no aha moment. There is no great revelation. There is no flip of a scripture that's going to be, wow. You know, there was no wow moment. And man, I just had to stop myself and say, wait a minute. It, when it ever comes to the place where the preaching of the gospel is not good enough, then we need to stop. We just need to stop and get back to that basics. So sharing the gospel, the main business is the main business. Um, so it was, a powerful day to, to do all that. Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you, you know what born again means, click yes in the, in the box over there and let us know that you're following along with us. Uh, it started with, a as I shared <laughs> Sunday, the uh, sermon that I bumped into from uh, R.C. Sproul. I went back. Did you watch the entire sermon or just that 12-minute? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that 12 or the... Oh, no, I just watched the, the, okay. the, that clip, the 12 minutes. I, went, I found that video and I all watched right. it. That was mm -hmm. It was cool. That was one of his last sermons. Oh, I did not know that part. Yeah. Or, no, well, you did mention it, but yeah, I he, had all that. He passed away in 2017, and that was one of the last sermons that he preached. But what really reached out and grabbed me was that, that screenshot that you guys had on the screen, uh, most people will go to hell. Man, we don't want to admit that. We don't like that. But according to the Scripture, Matthew chapter 7, Luke chapter 13, the straight gate and the narrow way, it tells us that it's true. Jesus said, few there will be that find it. So that means that we've got to stay busy. Yeah, we should never, never stop, uh, never stop working. Because mm -hmm. Jesus didn't and he doesn't. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's just that it, it's too easy to. That's why I guess that's why I harp so much on not keeping everything in the building, uh, you know, and. Not to sound like we're begging, but you know, like sharing the sharing the YouTube and the TikTok and the Facebook stuff, just to share, you know, because you never know mm -hmm. if something you share where it will go, who on your friends list needs to hear it at the time, and they might not even mention anything to you about it. 
but you just never know who needs to hear what at any given moment. And I'm just a firm believer of God. Absolutely. Hacking the algorithm uh, and making whatever needs to get in front of somebody, get in front, in front of somebody. I've, I've seen several videos myself that I needed to hear at the time just by randomly mm -hmm. seeing it. Yeah, and that sermon especially. I mean, if y'all don't share much of anything else, that's a good one to share because the, even the title, You Must Be Born Again, uh, stirs something up on the inside of somebody and gets them to start thinking about it. And, and if you can get them to, D.L. Moody said, if I can get someone to think about the condition of his soul for five minutes, he is sure to be converted. So it's, it's the main business and that's what we're here to, to get involved. And there's in. a lot of people, there's a lot of people that believe in, in heaven or hell. There's also a lot of people that believe, uh, which is weird. They believe in, what is it? They believe in angels, but not demons. It's like they believe in one mm -hmm, side, but mm -hmm. not the other. And so mm -hmm. it's like, you're already kind of right there. You just need that e extra little nudge to finish. And um, I think that's what's awesome with, with people that weren't, that didn't grow up in the faith. People like Kat Von D or, mm -hmm. you know, Hulk Hogan, or uh, I think one of the coolest things I found out recently is the guy that plays Jack Reacher, um, right. Alan Richen has a whole YouTube channel that he uses to spread the gospel and talk about scripture. I had no idea that guy was a Christian. That's, right. that's awesome. But it, it's what's really cool to see is usually the people that didn't grow up in the faith and that genuinely search for the truth, they have such a passion yeah. and a drive to spread the gospel after that, that they like, the, you, you can't take it away from them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you see it more often from the people that grew up in church that they're the ones that fall away because they had like a weird upbringing or they had some trauma in the church or you know something happened or they got church hurt they got people hurt from somebody within the church and just because there was nasty people in the building at the time doesn't mean that god doesn't love you it doesn't mean you know that that's how christianity is i mean we're all imperfect people uh and it's just you can't base your whole eternity off of one encounter with an imperfect person in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, if I was the devil, I would make sure that you bumped into that person so that you would trip up and oh, yeah, exactly. fall away. So now stay focused on it. So I had a, a really cool moment that the focus of, of it all was you must be born again and encouraging people to be sure. I, I told them at the beginning and remember this, uh, I said, I'm not here to make you shout. I'm here to make you sure. And boy, yeah, that, that was, was a cool. That was a Baptist moment right there. I'm not here to make you shout. I'm here to make you sure. Well, after the sermon, Pastor J.D. Norris, who is on our pastoral care team, uh, he's been a, a Baptist preacher for 56 years, 57 have, years, I something like I that. I only know he's, he's been, what, his 80s? He's in his 80s. He came up here and we had a moment together. And one of the questions that I asked was, for people to be sure, one of the things that you need to be sure about is that you know when, where, how, what'd you do? What did you do with Jesus? Did, is it, and those of you that are online, here's an answer for you or question for you. Share with us, if you will, in the timelines, when you gave your life to Jesus, What? when was it, what year, where were you at? If you remember anything specific about it, throw it. I see Carl Punit said, I'm a believer. I was baptized at the beach. Tell me about that. When, where, when did you give your life to Jesus? Um, me, it was May of 1982. But JD came up with his Bible. He had it written down? Yes, everything. <laughs> he he had the, the, the date awesome. he was born again, the day that he was baptized, the date that he was um, called to preach, the date that he preached his first sermon. I'm like, come on, you've got it all right there. And so when you talk I about... Any of that. I mean, I have the date of the first sermon, which uh -huh. is on YouTube if you can find it, <laughs> but uh, in the youth room. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have any of that. I should have written it down. Yeah. So those of you that have just joined us, we're talking about the Sunday Sermon, You Must Be Born Again. I just asked everybody, throw it down on the comments for us. Uh, when did you give your life to Jesus? And if you want to share just a little snippet of it, you know, every believer needs to learn how to share their testimony in 60 seconds or less. You need to be able to say, for me, it was May of 1982. I was laying in bed. I was a lost <coughs> reprobate. I was thinking about a party the next night. And the Spirit of God just showed up in my bedroom and said, I'm calling you now. You will accept me or reject me, and I won't bother you again. And it hit me solid, man. I rolled out of bed, got on my knees and prayed. It has happened that I was off that next Sunday. So for the first time 
<laughs> and forever, I got up, got dressed, and went to church with Kathy. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to church. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, Are you sure? It was good. It was good. So being born again. You, you weren't even born then, but back in the 80s, man, being born again went through this renaissance because um, people thought that it was a term that the, the church world that we just made up. Oh, there's no such thing as being born again. It was John chapter 3. It was the words of Jesus in bold, bright red letters. His, it's amazing the things that people just leave out of the Bible. Once yeah, I don't know. To, it, huh? You know what? The people, though, that don't read the Bible are the ones that will argue with you about what it says. I get that all the time. I, I've been now studying the Bible for probably close to 50 years. Um, the last, oh, look at Kathy, April 20th, 1969. Hey, what, girl. Why is it on 420, Mom? I, what made her? Your oldest son is going to jump all over that. Jesus. April the on, 20th. I oh, was, was nine, nine years old. Well, look at sense. you. <laughs> you sweet thing. No, I, I see that all the time, too. Um, or, you know, you get all the the atheists or whoever, well, I've read the Bible. Uh, you know, that's great. But the Bible literally tells us that when you don't know God, yeah. you, you're not going to understand the By Bible. By the flesh, you can't understand. And then they're, they're not reading it to, they're not reading it out of a search for truth. They're not reading it out of a search for knowledge. They're just reading it to try to come against it. So it's like when you're reading against something mm -hmm. with ill intent, you're never going to be able to understand it the, the right way and the correct way that you're meant to. Tiffany Keelan, you were born again at Family Worship Center on Kings Estate Road by? By you. By me, yours truly. <laughs> That's really cool, <laughs> thank you. Carl Punit lived all over the world. I was you baptized at, uh, I baptized you, awesome. Yeah, he was there at um, that, the last one we mm -hmm. did of last year. Beautiful. <coughs> Jerry Strong, 1965. Come on, I was four years old. I was nothing. Oh, <laughs> so. <laughs> How exciting. Thank you. A janitor in my high school secretly gave me a weekend retreat in the mountains with Calvary Chapel Youth Group. There I dedicated my life to the Lord. Come on. I love that. I, I think every believer needs to be able to share your story just like that. And, and because if you don't know, you need to know. Right? I yeah. mean, I'm not getting you to question your salvation by any means, but I want you to be, you know, be sure of it so that you can share that. Kathy Murray, I was in sixth grade. 1965, Union Hope Church, Pastor Joe Chandler. Oh, wearing a pink cotton dress and a blue necklace. Now look at y'all got way better memories than I. Have. <laughs> Come on! I remember, I remember starting this whole preaching thing. Right. Didn't You'll it? remember much more <laughs> as it goes along. But I think as the world as the world is right now, people of faith, you know, your testimony and your assurance of salvation. It's so important to be able to share your story and let people know because people people want to know. I, I truly believe they they really want to know. It helps ground you more too, I think. Mm -hmm. Keeps you rooted. Mm -hmm. So to be able to say you must be born again. Well, going back to the story of the, the genesis of that sermon, R.C. Sproul, he preached that sermon uh, in 2017 and somebody had just downloaded it right before I found it, which was interesting to me. Uh, in just a couple of days, it had 135,000 views and over 1,500 comments, which, again, was amazing because he had already been dead for seven years. I love that. Uh, and I have no doubt that our stuff is going to be floating around. Yeah, I hope so. Mine's going to be Not around. Not for my sake, but just so somebody somebody somewhere can hear it and get cha cha turned around. Da -da -da -da. Easy for you to say, Carol Dickinson, except Christ when I was eight years old. But after all kinds of mess, rededicated in 2015. Let's talk about that, the rededication uh, of, of your life, rededication, because that's kind of my story. And I was eight years old the first time that I really was aware that I gave my life to Jesus. I was at summer camp. I was a little snot. I was at summer camp. I only went because mom and dad made me go. Uh, and one night at the uh, altar call, all my friends started crying and went to the altar. And I was like, oh, you bunch of crybabies. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, I was up there right along with them praying and giving my life to the Lord. At 14, I fell away. But at 20, I rededicated my life to Christ. There's a lot of people that, that don't think that's really possible, that you can rededicate your life to Jesus. I don't see why not. I mean, 
Um, didn't Paul himself say he was worried about losing um, his stand? I can't remember the phrasing. I just read it earlier, too. Mm -hmm. That's what sucks. Oh, yes. Lest by any means I myself become a castaway. Something like that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's I know there's the people that think once saved, always saved. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't matter what you do, which really doesn't make any sense because Jesus Boy, literally think. talks about the people that said that they did works in his name. And mm -hmm. he says, depart from me. I've never knew you. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it in the family room. Um, that whole part of that. Um, I truly believe as a as a believer for a long time we love hearing jared tell his story <laughs> i lived his story so i know most of it myself but uh that whole um losing your salvation i, I brought up in a church that you know you can be saved and you can be lost you can save it and lose it well i lived a lot of my life as a child afraid that jesus was up in heaven with a eraser and every time i did something bad he erased my name and then i had to redo it all over again um, I truly now have come to the place as a believer where I believe our salvation is a lot more secure than we think that it is. That doesn't mean that we can trample on his grace because even Paul said we crucify him afresh every time that we, we do that. But I truly believe that our salvation is a lot stronger than we think that it is. So in other words, like if I, I make a mistake, I, I don't, I'm not lost. I don't have to start all over again. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? Well, yeah, because nobody, I mean, uh, nobody has it perfect right off the bat. Um, actually, I wrote something down about that. I can't remember which passage it was, but about, um, I'm having it in my next sermon about, you know, basically how they, John, hang on, I'll look it up right now. While he's doing that, in the comments of R.C. Sproul's sermon, I truly expected that there was going to be a bloodbath. I thought that they were going to be mean and people were going to go, how dare you say, you know, most people are going to go to hell. But when I went into the comments, most of the people were agreeing with him. And then what I said Sunday was that they were sharing the gospel in the comments. Never be afraid to do that. Like, you know, just drop a little Jesus loves you in, in these comments areas because it matters. Um, it, and all of the people that were sharing that gospel were so loving. You know, if you've, you feel like you've gone too far just know that He loves you. If you feel like you're not sure of your eternity, just give your life to Jesus and start right now. It was great. It was a beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. Right? It was, um, yeah. So it was John six, <coughs> John sixteen, twenty nine through uh, thirty three. Essentially, Jesus' disciples said, "Now you're speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we see that you know all things, uh, and that you do not." that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. And Jesus, in verse 31, do you now believe, Jesus replied, a time is coming when, a time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So obviously this is before Jesus is crucified, and he accepts their statement of their faith, even though he knows their weakness and he knows that when he gets arrested, they're all just going to scatter and disappear. Mm -hmm. And he still accepts their statement of faith. So he knows that at that moment in time, they're placing their faith in him and accepting that he is God and he was sent by God and uh, that they accept that he is Messiah. But they he knows that they're still weak and they have to mm -hmm. grow into the the great people that we read about, you know, that Peter, you know, who mm -hmm. denied Jesus three times and then comes to write all these other books and do all these amazing things in the book of Acts. And so it's just, that's, that's, I think that's a testament, testament of it is that he knows that we're weak and, you know, in our weakness, he is made strong. He, he is with us in our weakness. The, the whole point is that you don't just, I think that's what the big issue a lot of people have with like baby Christians, quote unquote, for lack of a better term, is, you know, they're like, oh, whenever you come to church you, and give your life to God, you just immediately are supposed to have this massive shift and stop doing everything that you've ever done. And that's never going to be the case. Mm. You can't just uh, you look at the woman with the issue of blood from the sermon that I gave. You know, she dealt with something for 12 years. That was her whole identity. And <clears throat> only when she finally laid it down at Jesus's feet, because she was literally still suffering after she was healed, that he told her go in peace though so, you know it's not you don't just come to jesus and stop 
dealing with things. We're, we're human. We're still going to stumble. We're still going to trip. We're still going to fall. I mean, you, you look at Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him, and he still called him the rock. Mm-hmm. And on their statement of faith that he would build his church. And so, you know, he picked all these imperfect people mm-hmm. already knowing what was going to happen. And he still loved them and ate dinner with them and accepted to use them to spread his, his message from the get-go. Yep. Jerry, you said it right. His grace and forgiveness doesn't mean that we can just keep on sinning. We all stumble. We all fall. But his grace is sufficient for us all. <coughs> and eventually, as the part of the process, you grow, you mature, you get to that place where you, you walk it out a whole lot better. I see a lot of more testimonies in there, guys. Thank you for sharing all of those testimonies. You didn't do anything to earn the salvation. God did everything. Absolutely. I love the comments. When you guys start doing that, Joe Costello, I love your conversion story. <laughs> yeah, hard-headed thing. God is good. I, I think it needs to be reiterated that uh, being born again has nothing to do with religion, going to church, being a good person, doing good things, uh, weighing the scales, tilting the scales a little bit more in your favor because you're a good person, being baptized or any of that, but it has everything to do with what did you do with Jesus? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. I think, you know, and that's, that's how the Pharisees were. They lived their way thinking that by their good works that was how that's how they were going to be justified and became righteous and i mean which is funny because you look at abraham and they were he was made righteous before the law was even written just Mm -hmm. by his faith in god so it's it's literally our faith in god that makes us righteous it's not like kathy said it's not anything of our works nothing we can do before or after you know, is, is our salvation. And I think a lot of people take that as the, you know, well, Jesus gave me my salvation. So now no matter what I do, I can lose it. That's, I don't really think that's the case because you can't just, you can't really profess faith in Jesus and then turn around and curse him and expect Mm -hmm. him to still accept you into heaven. But all that really shows is you just probably said the words out of fear, not out of a genuine change of heart. And, you know, that's why Jesus looks for that looks for that uh that change in your heart you know because when you truly come to him Mm -hmm. out of the love that you have out of the you know truly accepting that you are a sinner and you're lost and you need him and he's done everything for you he's the one that brings the change in your life and change is never usually i mean obviously i'm sure there are cases where somebody can just drop everything and go but for the majority of the time it is A process. Mm -hmm. The evidence of salvation, I said Sunday, is a changed and a changing life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So you're changed, but the process of sanctification means the process of becoming more like Jesus. We are, as we look into his word, we are changed from glory to glory by the word of God. So it is a process. The evidence of salvation is a changed and a changing life. You continue to change. I said something that I didn't know was controversial. Uh, but but some people think that it is. I said there are exactly two ways that you can enter into eternity, either saved or lost. Some people think that's a little controversial. What about you? I, 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 how else do you put it? Right? <laughs> you, saved or lost, forgiven. Either, there's only two options. You're either going up or you're going down. I mean... <laughs> there is no left and right. There's only up and down. There's only up and down. It's either heaven or hell, and you get to make the choice. And the graphic that Kelsey made to go along with that, heaven is real, hell is real, and eternity is forever. That yeah. will make you think. That's a long time to have been wrong. It's that's a much why, better time if you're right. That's why, you know, you need to make up your decision. Choose you this day who you'll serve. I came to the end of the thing, and uh, I gave some thoughts about people, and, and kind of a, I just wrote it down. Uh, you say, I'll get to it later. How many times have you talked to somebody about you were talking before we got on air about uh, somebody who had a traumatic experience in their life, and you said, "Hey, man, you might want to." I've seen several, and I've, you might want to tighten I've it up. Continually invited them to church, and they have yet to come. Uh, and you know, we've all known or even been that person that's like, "I'm just going to wait until I'm about to die, and then, oh, Jesus, Ooh. take me to heaven." I don't know if you've ever had anything fast happen to you. Uh, there is no time. No. 
at all for any of that. I've had, uh, doing line work, I've had things <laughs> blow up in my face and literally by the grace of God, I wasn't touching anything at the time. There's, <laughs> if you're a non-believer, there's about enough time for half of one, <laughs> one wrong word. You don't get enough time to say a sinner's prayer. No, you don't. And it, that was always my stupidity. When I was a young reprobate, I would say the same thing. Well, I'll just wait till, you know, I'm just about to die and then I'll, and then I'll pray. The scripture says, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. When should I get saved? The moment that you feel conviction. The moment that you feel like you're seeing the truth and you're hearing the truth and you need to convert, that is when it's supposed to happen. You say, I'll get to it later. You might not have later. No, nothing, nothing is guaranteed at all. When I was a little boy, we went to a Baptist church for a brief period of time over on A1A. Uh, right now, I think it's a Unitarian church over there, but one night we were in church and we heard tires squealing, eee, bam, you heard something Oof. crash. Well, we went, you know, everybody kind of moved outside and we just, I don't know, for some reason, church just stopped because we knew it was something bad. Went out there and there was a young teenage boy who had been in a car crash and he was underneath, the car was upside down, he was underneath it and he was dead. And Oof. it was horrible. Uh, and I've never forgotten that moment of realization that, man, this kid had not even a second and he was gone. Yeah, it's, everything is way too quick. I mean, we've had that, that car accident, what was it last year or the year before, that was right outside of my house that you, mm -hmm. somebody, yeah. somebody driving the wrong way down 207 just plowed right into someone. You say, well, I'm a good person. Well, I, you know, I, uh, you must be born again. Well, I'm a good person. Are you? I mean, according to the scripture, there was none righteous. No, not none. one. No one's a good person. Have you ever, I love what, uh, Kirk Cameron and uh, what's that guy that he works with all the time? Ray Comfort. Kirk Cameron and Ray, Ray Comfort. Comfort. When they when they confront people on the street to share oh. the gospel with them, um, um, and they say, "Well, okay, you're a good person. Have you ever told a lie?" Well, yeah. Well, what does that make you? A liar. Have you ever stolen something? Well, yeah, I have. Well, what does that make you? A thief. Oh, because have you ever looked on a woman to lust on her in your heart? Well, what does that make you? Uh, you know, a sinner. Well, so you're a, you're a lying, stealing, lust-filled man. You're not a good person. You're, so it's one of the greatest lies that the, the devil causes us to still believe. I'm a good person. Without Jesus, you're not. We no. all have the capacity for evil. No, yeah, there's, yeah, that's, that, it's, it's a level playing field. You must be born again. Josh, uh, Joshua 24, 15, Job, choose you this day who you will serve. I've been too bad for the Lord to save me. You ever hear anybody say that? Uh, no, I don't think I have actually. I, I probably certainly. have. I have in prison. Um, I, when we used to do motorcycle ministry in prison, you went a few times. Uh, you have somebody that's just, you almost believe them because you're like, <laughs> that guy's scary. But you know, I've, I've done too much. There's no way that God can forgive me. Jesus, I love this. He said, I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinner to repentance. The biggest sinner, the chiefest of sinners was Paul, and God saved him. You haven't been too bad. No, never. And there's nothing you, you, you can or have done that he... Oh, man, how do you word it? Obviously, you have to come and know Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior, but... And correct me if this sounds really wrong, but it, there would technically be nothing that he hasn't, obviously, that he hasn't already taken care of on the cross. There's nothing he hasn't already forgiven because mm -hmm. he can't go back and do it again. But mm -hmm. that's the whole point is it, everything has, I guess it's kind of like you just have to accept it. The work is done. Yeah, the work is done. He's, the blood has been sh shed. The work is done. You've got to, how do I do it? You confess with your mouth and you believe. Yeah, that came out a lot smoother than <laughs> what was going on in my head. <laughs> I was worried it was going to sound like completely different, but I managed to stumble my way through it. But yeah, the, I know, you know, the, you say, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not good enough. That's one I, I've heard a lot more, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not good enough to be used by God or I'm, I'm not worthy. Um, you know, how could God use anybody like me kind of thing. Woo. And uh, he, that's all he does is use people exactly like you. You look at how Peter was mm -hmm. with a bad attitude and always attacking people. All the disciples were always fighting each other. Paul was persecuting the church. I yeah. mean, yeah. There's any, you, wanna, you can just keep going down the list. Nobody has ever been 
great. Amen. How? How do I get saved? The Philippian jailer. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. How did you like that sinner? <coughs> I was about to bring that up. That huh? was... I just saw a bunch of faces go, huh? <laughs> I was like, whoa. Half of me was like, that was such a cop out. And the other half was like, it was genius. Because it was like, man... Like, I, I, I wish you had your headphones because I, I think I got in the ear and I was like, that was cheating. That was cheating. <laughs> we got to say was more. Good. I mean, it made sense because it, it, right? you're not wrong. And I've seen stuff, you know, people get all mad about the thief on the cross. But mm -hmm. it's like he didn't he didn't say anything. He just, Lord, <laughs> Lord, remember me. But That's obviously it. Jesus knew his heart. So right. that was like he knew, he knew the heart behind it. But it was like That's when you what said I it, feeling. I was like, oh, my gosh. That's what I was feeling in that moment is that it because was he knew his heart. He knew his heart. And I'm sure there were people that were stunned and maybe people who will watch that sermon later who will be stunned by it. But biblically, scripture. I need to clip it up and make that a short. We need to make that a short. Well, because you've started it here and I'm, I'm so happy about it that, that we are really pushing for people, you know, and inviting people to, to pray and say the sinner's prayer. And for anybody who says, well, the Bible never says sinner's prayer. Man, you know how many times I've heard that in my life? Oh, I, I oh, hear it all the time. Sinner's prayer is not Elevation real. Church, they say it at the end of every sermon, and people are like, oh, that's not how you blah, blah, blah. And right. all you're doing is getting it's people a formula. to say it. It's not and even if biblical. Say, if you're making everybody just say it, are they even really saved? And it's like, like uh, yeah, obviously, when you have the whole church say it together, there's some people just saying it. There's mm. some people saying it to give courage to someone else. There's some people saying it to just not look awkward by not saying it and then you never know who is genuinely saying it for the first time to right. get saved so uh, that's it oh man i'll take that chance any day i hate like the clicks within things and i i get so fired you know when people are attacking the church and attacking pastors and i can't stand stuff exactly like it's like they want this to be some exclusive club like, oh, I found Jesus, and, you know, I was a piece of crap beforehand, but I found Jesus, and I'm great now. But don't let anybody else come in the church. You know, I deserve to go to heaven, but don't let anybody else come to church. So, yeah, the sinner's prayer is completely unbiblical. Don't let anybody say it. We don't, yeah, because Jesus was totally like, yeah, you know what? There's enough people in heaven. Don't, don't, don't let anybody else in. But even the statement of their theology, I found Jesus, and everything's all right. No, you didn't. The Bible says he found you. He yeah. leaves the 99 to come find you. And you, that's, you that's the him. thing, too. Did you really find Jesus if you're not wanting anybody else to find Jesus? Because if you truly found Jesus and he has gripped your heart, then you know there is a heaven and a hell. Yes. And hell's going to be absolutely freaking horrible. So you don't want anybody else to go there either because now that you've escaped it, you shouldn't even want it on your worst enemy. I mean, yes. seriously, we should Amen. be warning everybody at every chance we can get. And if you're too <laughs> too cowardly to say a single word to anyone, whether that's your friends, your family, or a coworker, there's something you really need to have uh, within yourself that you need to pray to God about and have a reality check because you should be sharing the gospel each and every, ch it should yeah. be burning so deeply within you that you can't help but bubble over and share it to somebody. You should be saying something to somebody at work or at school or at church every single day of your life to have them avoid eternal damnation because hell's going to suck. I mean, it's not, I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, it's just a, all the best people are in hell. You, no. ACDC party, I highway mean, to it hell. is not going to it's be not. an enjoyable time for anyone at all. And I just, that's what I can't stand when people come against stuff like that. Like, cool, you know, yeah, maybe not everybody's meaning it when they say it. But even if one person in the yes. crowd or one person online is watching it and they come to know Jesus genuinely because of the message that you just spoke and the prayer that they just prayed, that's a win. Yes. So, I mean, if you, if you are upset about a church saying the sinner's prayer, you seriously need to come to God and repent because you're a jerk. And that's a lot nicer of a word that first popped in my head. <coughs> the stat is still true that 95% of all Christians, unfortunately, have never led a single soul to salvation in Jesus Christ. 
That's what I'm saying. They think it's, it's like a club. It's horrible. It's like a club. And we got in and don't let anybody else don't let anybody else in. There's the door. We should be doing everything that we can do to reach the lost to, so that people that are far from God can come back to the arms of the Father. Exactly. So, yeah. And Thank see, you. that's the beauty that I love of that mission statement because it, it, it is on the prodigal son. Uh, and if you don't know, the prodigal son is not just a story about the one that went away. The elder brother that was there represents all those kinds of people within the church that think, oh, well, I've been here. I haven't done anything good. Why are we celebrating the lost kid coming back? Right. You've got such a hard heart when you're under that mentality that you are just as far away from God as the one that ran off on his own is. Mm -hmm. That is the whole story of the prodigal son. Everybody, we always get wrapped up on the one that went astray and came back that we don't realize Jesus was also speaking to. The elder brother was representing the Pharisees. When are you going to preach that? I don't know. You need to write that sermon because it burns in you. I can you, always you're talking about it. And it's I just I can't stand just I hate disunity and division. And, you know, like y'all are always like, oh, don't look at the comments. I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess, because I always look at the comments. I don't know. I cannot stand just it is it is amazing to me that we will attack preachers and pastors and, oh, they're preaching prosperity and look at all the expensive clothes they're wearing. But they don't care if they're wearing it. They don't care if some celebrity's wearing it. It doesn't matter as long as it's not within the church, even though it's biblically accurate that those preaching the gospel are supposed to be su supported and blessed by God. And do you really want to go to a church that has a broke pastor? Because what happens to the head flows to the body. So I don't know about you. I don't want to be underneath somebody that's dressed in homeless man rags because I don't want to live like a homeless man. Oh, I just, I can't stand it. It fires me up. People attack preachers. It's like a bandwagon. Yeah. It, it is a, it's it's, a it is a bandwagon. People just jump on the train. Oh, we don't want the pastor to get money, but we'll have a hundred thousand followers on YouTube while we make a, a, a video every other day about Stephen Furtick or TD Jakes or Mike Todd or, or Craig Rochelle or uh, some other pastor that we don't like and we don't agree with. And instead of praying for them, we're just going to persecute them on our own channel. But hey, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube. And while you're at it, get on our store and buy our T-shirt that has their face on it that we get money that goes into our bank. Do you see the problem yet? Welcome to the family room. Do you see what fires <laughs> me up? Let's attack pastors for being blessed while we sell their faces on T-shirts so we can get money. And we're glad that you guys are with us tonight. This is uh, I, the is family room. This, burns is, this is the me. unfiltered, uncensored Jared moment. There it is. Put that on stinking reel. <laughs> Y'all been waiting for him to come out of that closet. There I he is. It. I hate it. I don't know. That's I what probably shouldn't hate things, but I cannot stand the fact that people are spending so much time attacking, attack. attacking mm -hmm. preachers instead of even just preaching the gospel themselves. And I won't go back into it because I'll just I'll keep yelling. But I, it's stupid to me. Christians, shut up and get out in the world and preach the gospel instead of attacking preachers. Make that a real hashtag that Kelsey, make a shirt. Kelsey's probably going to take that and make a real out of it. It needs five seconds. Christians need to shut their mouths on attacking each other. And go out and preach the gospel. I mean, that is literally it. That's what Jesus... J There's a lot more in the Bible than, oh, let's talk about all the, the false prophet. I mean, Jesus didn't spend all his time talking about false prophets. No. Good night, no. no and everybody no. suddenly is an armchair theologian that thinks they have the entire <laughs> Bible figured out. As Kelsey and and they know who they can... <laughs> Stop it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. They, it's just ridiculous. They've got no training or anything like that, and they've read the Bible all of three verses, and suddenly they know who who is right and who is wrong. We're going to get to heaven and find out that we have all said something completely, utterly stupid. Your mama's in there. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know. Preach it. Mama, I just that's did. your boy. He's, he's a little fired up. Clip it up. When are you preaching again, by the way? I was going to say if I feel better by Sunday. <coughs> so is that coming? We'll or? see. All right. We'll find out soon. So as we sit here tonight in the family room <laughs> on Wednesday, we don't know who's preaching Sunday. So this church is not built on superstar yeah, Kelsey, mentality. That's not at all unfiltered. That was, <laughs> that was through the Jesus filter. We are not built on a superstar mentality around here. So it might be me. It might be Jared. So either way. We'll do both. 
One of these I'm days we can tag team something. I want to get Kathy into a tag team thing because she she does that. She starts feeding off of the, what you're talking about, and she le drops a lot of no clicks, a no lot clicks. of good stuff. That's so. what I'm saying. There shouldn't be it. Oh. It is the body of Christ made up of red, brown, yellow, black, and white. It is not an exclusive club. Jesus didn't say, hey, only, only these people can come to me. No, everybody, go make disciples of the entire world, of every nation. And if you're not doing that, I don't know what to tell you. You're wrong. You even got Betty Keaton going. Well, I hope everybody's fired up because I just <laughs> screamed and I can barely talk and breathe because whatever this man-made I can feel myself getting got mad. coming up. <laughs> <coughs> Came out of a lab in Wuhan, China. <laughs> Can't say that. We're no, this is what I've been telling you. Let that guy out. When you let that guy out, that's everything. Let that, let that angry jerk out that almost well, fusses at people. He will have to have some boundaries <laughs> in there somewhere, and there are certain words that we don't want you to say, but things like that, it's authentic. It's, you're right, Kelsey, unfiltered, and that's what I think this world is looking for. I think that's one of the reasons people like our church, that, because now it's no longer me. Now it's you, too. They're just waiting for whatever it is about to come out of your mouth that's going to be like that OMG <laughs> What moment. can we cancel you over? What could it be like? What's he going to say next? For years, that's what people said about coming here when I was in that position. Uh, what uh, thing is he going to say? I'm sweating under this coat, Carl. I am sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I am already sweating. No, I, I won't get back into it. We're already running running by late. Yeah, but it's um, just getting good now. Yeah. He's no, not wrong. I, I just, I can't, I mean, look at it. Go type in any famous pastor's name on YouTube and... There is any number of people who have massive YouTube platforms that want to come against mm -hmm. them and break down everything apart that they said. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. There's so much. I mean, a house divided cannot stand. Amen. And we preach to people about the goodness and the greatness of Jesus and the love of God. But we all hate each other within the church. And all we do is attack each other within the church. And this person's wrong. And it's like people are on the outside looking at us going, why would I want any part of that? Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Maybe let's take that into heart and let's be that thing that makes us different. To be that kind of people, be that kind of church. To be those people, that's man. Just, uh, that's unity. Jesus wants unity. He doesn't want disunity. He well, doesn't that's like what they say to me all division. the time. Well, do you hear about what's going on over there in that church? No, I don't. Because I don't care. I, I, just, I don't care. Let them do what they're doing. Let us do what we do. Let them plow the ground however they want to. We'll plow the ground Everybody here. at some point is going to say something that probably sounds nasty or heretical or, you know, there's... When you're up here preaching in the moment or speaking, it's easy to get tongue twisted mm -hmm. and say something that you either haven't thought all the way through or you say something in the moment and it came across wrong or your words got jumbled up or whatever. And true to the world, they're going to clip that up and run with it instead of. That's a fact. <laughs> instead of, you know, I mean, that's why nobody reads articles anymore. We just. We just read the headlines, that. and in the headline doesn't even have to match the article. Doesn't even have to be true. Click I mean, bank. you see it on Facebook all the time. Just the 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 headline will say something, and then you can click the comments, and everybody's like ah, popping off about it. And then you'll find that one person who actually clicked it, and they're like, "This doesn't even make sense. It doesn't match what anything in the article says." Preacher sneakers. Yes, preachers and sneakers on Instagram. I'll get started on that because I think that's a joke as well. That was one of the things I was talking about. I'm wearing boots. I don't wear sneakers, so you've I talked mean, to me about that numerous times. I looked at it the other day and I was like, "Wow, those are nice. Those are nice. That's some nice shoes. That looks ugly, but wow." And yeah, some of it is expensive. These people also have millions of books sold, and they can do whatever they want with it. It's amazing to me that we will do whatever we want with their money, but the pastor's supposed to live in a cardboard box from the fridge that he had donated. The preachers and sneakers, <laughs> sneakers thing is like neat, but what I can't stand is, and I've heard people talk about it that know the people that run it, there's a lot of pastors that get things gifted to them mm -hmm. and get expensive shoes gifted to them, get expensive jackets gifted to them, and for the record, this was a $15 Levi jacket that I got on sale. Uh, <clears throat> but 
you go on that page and they're just like, oh, look at what this person's wearing. They must, and it's like, preacher, preachers literally get things gifted to them out of the goodness of people's hearts. And we don't care that actors are doing everything under the sun and spending exorbitant amounts of money. But if a pastor's wearing a $400 pair of shoes that either he bought or someone else bought for him. Oh my God, that's terrible. They're in it for the money. They're dipping into the tithes. I mean, what did you tell me the other day? The the, the temple that Solomon built by today's standards would have been worth over a trillion, a trillion dollars. dollars. Yep. And David, can you imagine if a church spent that much money? Oh, they they must do nothing for the homeless. I saw it years ago that, that David, the shepherd boy, the offering that he gave to the construction of the temple, if it were calculated by today's standards, would have been about ninety billion dollars, something like that. I mean, it's just a ridiculous amount of money. The blessing of God. Speaking of the blessing of God, Shut can I me segue up into we that? Keep going. Uh, as we are <laughs> wrapping this up tonight, <laughs> before the FCC closes us down, <laughs> <laughs> it probably already has. We are. Um, we are, how can I say it? Um, we are waiting on word for the, the land that we are looking at. If you've ever been praying, you need to pray now because they contacted us back this afternoon, just a few minutes before we went on tonight and asked for a particular thing. And so we are believing that's a good sign and it looks like we're leaning in that direction. So pray. On your knees, pray. I think pray. Uh, out of humility and getting on your face, before God, and this would praying. be the next and pray um, for the provision the of God down the road. Jesus, help my church. Kind of pray that the provision of God would happen, that the will of God would happen, uh, because we're right there knocking on that door of the future. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Again, on Sunday, um, come One early. Of us. <laughs> huh? One of us. One of us is going to be speaking Sunday, so you never know till you get here. Come early, please. Do get a cup of coffee. Come in and sit and. Have a good time with us here. Uh, we have a few things that we're developing over the next few days. We had a meeting today with some people to talk about one of the ways that we want I'm to bless. I'm excited about that. We're yeah, going to bless our community. Out, you're going to be excited. If too. you haven't seen it on our Facebook page yet, there's a poll over there. Go over and answer the questions about what kind of food uh, from yes. the food truck you'd one like. One or two types of food. There is a big list. That doesn't mean type the whole list, please. Um, reading is uh, very important for life. And uh, I know this is Florida, but I would ask people to kindly read the post and follow directions for once in your life. Um, you know. Amen. <laughs> it's just, I'm saying it out of jest. But yes, uh, one or two posts on your favorite kind of food. You'll find it on our Facebook page, in, page on our page. And uh, yeah, make sure you come early. No, um, we do not have a private jet. No. Unless you have one that you want to donate to us, and then we'll <laughs> we'll fly around in it. <coughs> no, we don't. We're very simple people, but God has been good to us, and the best is yet to come. So don't get surprised at what comes up. With that, been a good night. It was great. It started out great. Then Kelsey. And y'all got me mad and got me yelling, and now nobody's going to like Fire me anymore. Fire is coming home tonight. And I'm tonight. not going to lose any sleep over it because I don't care. You feeling any better? No. <laughs> Let's pray that he gets to feeling better. Y'all yes. pray for your pastor. He needs to get better. I feel slightly better. If he doesn't get better by Sunday, y'all are going to have to put up with me. And I'd rather have him up to bat this Sunday because I'm going to ride up to Beaufort for a couple of minutes. and <laughs> Watch the sunset. Watch the... <laughs> All right. With that, we've ran behind. Thank you for staying the entire time for those of you, those of you that have. This has been the longest <laughs> one yet. Um, I'd like to say I'm sorry for my rant, but I'm not sorry because it's all true. Amen. We love you. We'll see you Sunday. Come early. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. If you did, make sure that you share and subscribe so that we can get you these sermons as soon as they are available. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone that's a part of the family. Whether you serve with us or give financially, it's because of you that we are able to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. If you have any questions or would like to get more involved, click the link in the description. Thank you. Have a blessed week.